Hello. Today I'm going to be demonstrating VMFS lifecycle management using the Pure Storage plugin for the vSphere client. Now the first step in lifecycle management for VMFS, of course, is to create one. So using the plugin, we can provision a new data store. We'll choose the VMFS type, give it a friendly name and a size, supported up to 64 terabytes max. And then we can choose the host or cluster to provision it to, and then an array. The plugin can suggest arrays, or you can choose one yourself. You can also provision directly to a pod for like stretch replication. I'm going to add it to an asynchronous replication group, and then also apply an optional bandwidth limit and or IOPS limit. For now, we won't put it in a volume group. I'll show that later. Complete the wizard, and now provision the data store. The data store will be created on the flash array, connected to the relevant host or host group. The hosts in the cluster or the host you're provisioning to will be rescanned and formatted with VMFS. The data store now appears. There's a variety of places to manage a VMFS data store with a plugin, but first on the summary page, there's some basic information and some links to other tools and panels we offer in the plugin, like host connectivity. In the 450 plugin, this panel is new. As you can see, it's connected to a cluster and its various hosts, but maybe we'd like to connect it to a second cluster. We can choose that cluster and click Mount. This will connect it to the host group for that particular cluster. The host group needs to be pre-created, which can be done with a plugin, and then it'll rescan and that data store will be mounted. As you can see, it is now mounted to both of my clusters and the compute in both of those clusters currently. We can also use the plugin to edit the data store. So if we wanted to resize the data store, we can do that here. You can also rename it, change the membership of the group or pod, or also change the QoS limit if you prefer. We will grow the data store from 24 terabytes to 30. This will grow the underlying volume and rescan and do a VMFS volume grow to take up the new capacity. If we look at the summary tab and look in the upper right-hand corner, you can see indeed it has this new capacity and is reflected in the vSphere client. We can also view the performance. In 4.5.0, these charts have also been greatly improved. You can see read information, write information, by default both are shown together, over a period of time. You can deselect one of them, read or writes, to see more information about the selected option, more information about reads, and more metrics available. Same thing with writes. If you only select writes, you'll see more information and more metrics available specifically around write information. We store up to one year's worth of data for a given array, for a given volume. Uh, and of course, if that volume exists that amount of time, we will show that amount of performance. This is a new data store, so there's not much to see. Lastly, we'll look at the host connection and, man and further manage this data store. So I can remove it from the existing cluster if I so choose. This will safely unmount and detach the SCSI device from all the hosts in the cluster. And then it'll disconnect it from the host group and then rescan to clear up the connections from the VMware perspective. This data store will then be removed from the cluster. The data store is now removed from that particular cluster. The plugin also allows you to directly connect it to a host. Now we suggest connecting it to the entire cluster. That's why it defaults to the host group. But you can do this if you do need to connect it specifically to a single host. This will connect it to that host object, rescan, and mount the data store. But instead of multiple hosts, it's just the host that you selected. Let me show we do warn on this. Because it's not a generally recommended situation, we want you to con connect the data store uniformly to the cluster. So we do show a warning, but it, what does work, it's, you're not in danger of a SEV1. You can also remove it specifically from a single host. This will unmount it, detach it, rescan, and then disconnect it from that host object on the flash array itself. The last step will be to clean up the connections so the vSphere client is accurately reporting the information of that data store connection. So you can see here we don't have this data store in any kind of container, what we call either a pod or a volume group. A pod is a namespace and a volume group is a grouping of volumes. Under the home screen of the vSphere plugin, you can control and configure volume groups. So by clicking, clicking on the flash array that owns that data store, we can create a new volume group. 
give it a friendly name, and optionally you can also give this entire volume group QoS limits. Inside of the volume group manager, you can also edit and change those QoS limits if you so choose. We'll keep it where it is. And then by clicking on the relevant data store, you can edit it and then add it into that volume group. You can also do this in the right click menu for edit data store. Hit the drop down and choose that new volume group. And this will move that data store or rather the volume under that data store into that volume group. From here, you can go back to that data store object in the vSphere client by clicking on go to data store. There's additional information like capacity metrics included in the vSphere plugin. There's no VMs or anything on this data store, so not a lot of interesting information, but this shows the VMware information and the underlying flash array information of that data store as well. How much has been written before data reduction and how much has been written after data reduction to that particular volume. The last major feature here is snapshot management. Since we added this uh, data store into a protection group, snapshots are created regularly. We can take that snapshot and create a copy data store for dev test reasons or so forth as you need. And this is a very similar wizard to provisioning a new data store. We can also add it into that volume group we created earlier. This will take that snapshot, copy it to a new volume, connect it to the appropriate host or host group, and then re-signature that data store to give it a new signature to make it unique, and then mount that re-signature data store and rename it to the name you specified in the wizard. This will make the underlying flash array volume and the new data store have that consistent name. As you can see, the data store is configured and added into that particular volume group. We can also create one-off snapshots. If you don't have a snapshot created from a protection group and you want to create a new one or just a point in time that you need, you can create that here and you can also delete that snapshot with an optional option to eradicate it immediately. When you delete something, we put it in a recycling bin for a period of time, generally 24 hours, and then it gets eradicated. Now that we're done with this data store, we can then do the final step in lifecycle management, which is to remove it. This will unmount it and detach it from all the relevant hosts. This will disconnect it from all the hosts and host group objects on the flash array, and then destroy it you have up to your eradication window on the flash array to recover that particular data store. By default, 24 hours, but that can be extended to up to 30 days by working with peer storage. This will remove the data store cleanly following best practices, ending the life cycle of that particular data store. This has been a demo of using the peer storage plugin for the vSphere client to manage your data stores. Thank you.